and my stomach was all boiled up, and I was thirsty and dry like it was August. But I knew that if I was going to be successful, that I had to push through it, I had to suffer through it, in the man, Usri Yusra, that if I made it through difficulties, the ease would come. So the birth of Ramadan, dear believers, shows us that the difficulties in life are to be overcome. How are we to overcome the difficulties in life? We turn our attention always to the strengthening of the fitra, the strengthening of the soul. And during this month of Ramadan, we believe that Muslims, all of us should have received our assignment. You should have your assignment. You should already know in your mind and your heart where you're going this year. You should have your assignment. You should know what drove you or what inspired your soul. You should know what passion brought hunger to your soul. You should know that that gift that Allah has put in you, the cutter of the Lord is on you. If your assignment is to go ahead and be that doctor, because that's what your soul is calling you for, then move in that direction because that is your assignment. If your assignment is to write that book, then get started writing that book because that is on your soul and that is your, your assignment. If your assignment is to, to be a better person, then get started in your assignment because the soul has called you. Your soul has spoken. Your soul has had its day. Your soul has had its relief. Your soul has had its, 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 its displeasure during the month of Ramadan. Our displeasure, our discomfort is pleasure for the soul. It's pleasure for the soul. When we struggle, the soul rides. When we abstain, the soul is fed. When we are up and not sleeping all day and all night, the soul rests. It rests because we are not vexing it. We are not putting pressure on it. We are not feeding it things that it don't want to eat in our minds, in our attitudes, and the way that we see things or the way that others are talking to us or talking about us, etc., etc. So we have been blessed to come through the month of Ramadan again, again, in 2022. 2022, we have come through the month of Ramadan again, and we should expect, we should expect blessings, we should expect rewards, we should expect progress, we should expect development, and we should expect the mercy of Allah to descend upon us because we submitted to the will of Allah and complied for 30 days. 30 days. It takes 30 days to change a habit. It takes 30 days to install a habit. And whatever you do for 30 days can stay with you for the rest of the year. But it requires some paying attention to. But look at your lives. Look at our lives now. If you don't feel like you came out of Ramadan better than you went into Ramadan, then have a conversation with Allah. Have a conversation with Allah. Allahu Akbar. You may be better off than you think. You know, sometimes we don't see the benefits of what's happened with us. Sometimes it seems like it's just so far away, like nothing happened. I didn't get anything. Allah will not deprive any of His servants from the mercy and blessings of, of Shah Ramadan. He called us to it. He brought us through it. And whatever it is in it for us, we will receive it. Because Allah has written for us all a qadr, the destiny. And Allah says that when He loves His creature, His human creature, He places Islam into its heart. So if Islam is in our hearts, then we know we have the love of Allah and Wadu. And we should expect that no matter how difficult things may be, how challenging that they may be, that we will overcome feasibility now. And I want to say this as I wrap this up. We as Muslims, we are now able to eat all day. Shouldn't eat all day, but <laughs> we can. We as Muslims are now free to engage in all of the pleasures, lawful pleasures of life every day without restriction except any restriction that we place on ourselves. If we want to fast, just for that, it's up to us. But let me put this in, in the atmosphere for all of us. While we are able to eat,
and sleep a little extra now. And talk and move around and enjoy the life that we live. There are still others who are not able to eat. There are still others who have no place to sleep. And if eating and sleeping and those things that are necessary for the human species are a priority for us, then should not we as a Muslim society consider that this should be our priority for those around us? We have opportunities abundant around our masters. You go to any masters in the area, well, some of them are pretty good neighborhoods that are almost in community. All neighborhoods are pretty really good. It's just a matter that some are managed differently than others. But if you go around in, in our neighborhoods, around our messages, you see people moving to and fro, back and forth, and they may not have anything. They may be collecting bottles and cans, and they may be looking dirty and disheveled, but they are human beings. They are human beings. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commissioned one of his human beings to be a mercy for all human beings. And his name is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah said that Muhammad is rahmatil al-alameen, a mercy for all the worlds. And those who follow Muhammad are likewise rahmatil al-alameen. So because some of us may have come from places that maybe it was uncomfortable for us, or we had to escape some circumstance that wasn't favorable for ourselves and for our families. What we have as Muslims is the most valuable commodity on the face of the earth. And even though we are in the land, now I'm a, I'm a new African. A new African means that I was born here in America, but my genes go back to Africa. But my imprint, what has affected me and helped mold me, is I'm an American. Okay. But some of us have come here from various places as Muslims. And because you may not be in the higher socioeconomic strata of the society that we live in, few of us are, that by no means does not mean that you are not in the best position to help those whose country you have come to, who may be on the bottom row lower than you. And they will warn you. But you come here as a person, rock to the line of me. And it's okay for you and me to reach out and to feed the hungry, to feed the poor, to help someone who's not among us or from us. And I have another thing that I think we need to look at. I see these big organizations, Muslim organizations, doing great works, absolutely great works. But I noticed during the month of Ramadan, they come into town and they ask for a lot of money. And they come into poor people, asking poor people for money for other poor people, but they never leave anything behind. We need to stop this. We need to make sure that if anyone comes into our communities asking for donations, that they leave at least one third of the donation for the poor people that they're asking for. Inshallah, just consider that. And then we as Muslims need to make up our or take up our responsibility to feed, to clothe, to house. You're going to imprint and impact with your power itself more people and make them faithful to Islam by what you do far greater than by what you say. People don't really care about what you say when they're hungry. They don't care about what you say when they're outdoors. They don't care about what you say when they say. They want to know what you're going to do. That's what they're going to do. What are you going to do? And when we do for people, because we are connected to the one who has power over all things, and if we put it into our minds that we are a savior for society, and that our mission is to help bring society back to its good senses and no services for all the people, if we put that into our minds, we will stop seeing ourselves 
as those who receive and realize within the words they can give. And what did our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? He said that the upper hand is better than the lower hand. Because it is the upper hand that gives and the lower hand that receives. Dear believers, we have the Quran, we have the Sunnah of the Prophet, we have a glorious history, we have a connection to the victory. We are the upper hand. I don't care where we are economically, we are the upper hand. And our voice, our presence, our sanity, our concerns, our ideas, our influence. America belongs to a lot like every place else. And the Muslim puts you at the top wherever you are. Period. I don't care if you find the green, purple, or blue. Being Muslim puts you on the top. So the rest of the world has come, and the rest of the world has gone. And here we are, dear believers, still here, still here, waiting again for the benefits and blessings and mercies of Allah to pour forth. So I pray Allah subhanahu that He bless us all, that He grant us the diet, that He give us strong vision, that He make us see our strength and our, our purpose in life, that He make us proud and not ashamed, that He give us courage and not fear, that he increase us in our resources and we pray Rabbana Ayyatana Adil Dunya Hasnatu wa Thalakna Hasnatu wa Thalakna Hasnatu wa Thalakna We ask Allah for the good in this life because we are the good people and the good people will always be on top Dear Muslims, you are the good people The society needs you You don't need the society And if there's a need, there has to be a good proposition It's a partnership But you are the good people the society that you live in. Never see yourself as the one who just received. Never see yourself as an immigrant. We're all immigrants. We're all immigrants. The one who means we're all immigrants. We need to have faith in him and stand up and own your reality as Muslims.